Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zia Scaraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas, for the F1 event this weekend. I'm with uh, uh, Ali uh, Saidi, the VP and Distinguished Engineer for AWS. Now, you are a, as the sign shows, global partner for Formula One. That's a big uh, responsibility, and it's also a great privilege. Uh, now, we're going to talk a little bit about chips. I talked to your colleague yesterday. We talked about the AI ML chips, uh, i.e. Tranium and Inferentia. We're going to talk about CPUs today. So before we get into that, though, maybe just a quick introduction on yourself and the role you play at Amazon. Yeah, so I've been working at AWS for a little over eight years now. Um, and in that time, I spent a lot of it working on our Graviton CPUs, our Graviton instances, and bringing those, um, the price performance that we get from Graviton into customers' hands. Yeah, and so Graviton is Amazon's CPU versus the AI element chips we talked about yesterday. Um, and so talk about this, what, like why does Amazon build its own CPUs with so many CPUs available today? We want to provide customers value. And we think that by building our own CPU, we can give people a product that performs better and also costs less. And so we find lots of customers utilizing Graviton and finding up to 40% better price performance for their workloads. And that's just a major savings for them. And by, by being able to get the higher performance and the lower cost that Graviton offers. Yeah, and what version of Graviton are we on now? We're on four. Oh, we four. started back in 2018 with the first Graviton. It was a, kind of a pipe cleaning to show the world that we could have another instance type um, that was a different architecture, the ARM architecture, but otherwise would look and feel the same, run a bunch of different OSs. Since then, in 2019, we had Graviton 2, 2020, uh, 2021, Graviton 3, and 2023, Graviton 4. Uh, and so now with those four versions, you know, the majority of the compute that we're putting into our data centers in 2023, 2024 was Graviton based. So we see a lot of customers utilizing Graviton for that price performance that I mentioned. Yeah. And what are our typical workloads that you see running on Graviton? You know, over the years- It's gonna be everything, really. Yeah, over the years, we started off with people running web servers and, and like distributed analytics. And now it's kind of everything. It's everything from CPU-based machine learning, media encoding, large-scale enterprise databases like SAP, kind of the full gamut is what we see today, really. Yeah, and There's so, very few areas where people weren't using that. And right you now. said uh, you, some customers seen like a 40% price performance improvement. Is yeah. that pretty typical for Graviton? Yeah, there's a lot of customers that I've seen things like 40%. 40%. Uh, you know, Pinterest is one of them that I showed you yesterday. And, and they've seen about 40% from increased performance and then the reduced cost adding up to the, and, and becoming a and a, a really great value. Yeah, now you've also got a product called Nitro, which uses Graviton, and so what's the difference between Nitro and Graviton? Nitro is the first chips that we built in AWS. Uh, it's where we took a lot of the, the complexity and the tax, the virtualization tax in a system, and moved it to our own silicon. And by doing so, we could offer higher performance, high performance I.O., and also do things like transparently encrypt networking and storage when so customers didn't have to make a trade-off between using CPU for or encryption versus versus performance. So we just do that can do that transparently with our, our newer Nitro cards. Okay, well. and so it's really more a system though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Nitro system includes our Nitro cards, we have Nitro chips, the Nitro hypervisor. We put all that together into the virtual machines that we offer in uh, in the cloud. And it, because we've abstracted away a lot of the virtualization, we can use uh, the Nitro system to enable other kinds of compute in the exact same way in AWS. For example, we have products that use uh, Mac minis, and you can get a Mac mini, it looks exactly the same. What we've done is we've just taken one of these Nitro cards that would be in a, a Graviton server or an x86 server and attach it to a Mac mini and offer the same uh, networking and storage experience as, as we do in any other instance. All right, now, as I mentioned, we're here at F1. Uh, they are, you are a global partner for them. And I know F1 is a big consumer of Graviton, right? And so how is F1 using Graviton? So F1 used AWS for the 2022 car redesign, where they went from being able to um, do one CFD, computational fluid dynamic simulation, where they were trying to understand how airflow went over the cars as they were defining the regulations. That's a really fascinating process, yeah. by the way. Yeah, yeah. It, it's super cool that you can do this in simulation. You don't have to, you don't have to do the expense of doing this in a wind tunnel. That's right. Um, and they were trying to redesign the car in their on-prem data centers they were getting like one experiment done every three days. By moving to AWS, they could reduce that time so they could get a couple of experiments done in a day. So it's really an amazing acceleration there 
of going from one or two times a week you can iterate to one to, to multiple times a day you can iterate. Yeah. Right. You can really advance um, your learning and your iteration just just much faster that way. And and so um, what uh, you know as far as Graviton goes, uh, F1 was using several of our instances types, but but some of them were Graviton. Our uh, our C6GN instances, which are uh, high networking. Graviton based instances, and they, see, they're using those for the CFD that we, we talked about. All right. Now, uh, uh, I think I don't think people realize sometimes how big the chip business inside Amazon is. And so you can give me a sense of how many Graviton chips are produced annually, or how many workloads run, and some kind of metric that can highlight really the size of the the, yeah. the Graviton business. Yeah. So, so from from in 2023 and 2024. The majority of CPUs we put into our data center were Graviton based. Um, so then, think about the, the scope and size yeah. of that, it's a it's a huge number. Uh, previously, we've we've shown numbers of we, we built more than two million chips, and that was a couple of years ago. So you can kind of get an idea of the scale there. Yeah. Um, we're, it, it, most people would never think of it. No. But, but but AWS is one of the largest silicon providers in the world. Yeah. We just provide silicon for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And ultimately for your customers, because yeah. they can buy it through the AWS absolutely. cloud. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, Ali, is there uh, anything else you want to mention about Graviton? I know you'll probably have some Graviton news coming up at reInvent, but I know you can't talk about that now. Not quite yet, yeah, but yeah, yeah. You know, we're never done innovating. One of the things we did with Graviton is just, we've been innovating every two years. So, so uh, you know, we're going to keep doing that and keep providing really impressive price performance gains for, for our customers. Okay, well, uh, I guess look for more Graviton coming to a cloud near you, right? So, yeah. uh, so on behalf of Ali Saidi, I'm Zia Skirval from ZK Research, saying thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and also hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast.